Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Bethel Assembly, located in Oshawa, Canada. Our mandate is to spread the good news and to influence our surrounding communities. We hope your time in this place of worship, love, communion, service, and community will be a glorious and life-transforming experience. This is a place for your entire family, a place for you and me. We are a community church that deeply cares about you. All ministries were created to meet individuals' needs. In Bethel Assembly, we are a Bible-believing church, charged with spreading the Word of God throughout the region of Durham. We are interested in your God-given potentials and wanted to help you to be able to fulfill your God-given destiny. We, we care about you. Welcome to your Bethel experience. welcome every one of us into the presence of the Lord. I want to welcome you to Bethel Experience. And for as many of us who have, you know, been following the Holy Ghost Congress, you and I can testify that God has spoken. And so I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. relax. relax. The, siege the siege is over. It's finally over. It's certainly over. It's surely over in the name of Jesus. And so we're going to go into a Thanksgiving session. We want to just thank God. But before we do that, I want to remind some of us. I know some of us may watch, you know, a few sections there. But I still want to remind us on what will happen when the siege is over. Amen. When the siege is over over. I'll be speaking about that this morning. Esther chapter 8. Let's read from verse 7. The book of Esther chapter 8. We'll read from verse 7 to verse 14. When the siege is over. It's not if. Amen. The siege is what? It's already over. And so what will happen to you? What will happen to me when the siege is over? Esther chapter 8 from verse 7 I'll read to verse 14. Then the king Asherah said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Amon, and him they have hung upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write ye also for the Jews, as it liketh you in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring, for the writing which is written in the king's name, and seal with the king's ring, may no man reverse. I want you to take note of that. That what God has already said concerning you, it is settled. Amen. No one can reverse it. Amen. Amen. Verse 9, let's continue. Then what the king's tribe called at that time in the third month, that is the month seven of the three and twentieth day thereof, and it was written according to all the Mordecai. Amen. Let's continue, please. And he wrote in the king Asherah's name, and sealed it with the king's ring, and sent letters by post on horseback, and riders on mul and camel, and young dromedaries, wherein the king granted the Jews, which were in every city, to gather themselves together, and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the powers of the, their enemies, amen, of the people and province, that will assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Amen? We're reading to verse 14. Upon one day in all the provinces of King Azuros, namely upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month Ada, then the copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all the people. And that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. Amen. So the post that rode upon the mole and camel went out, being hastened and pressed on 
by the king's commandment. And the decree was given at Shushan, the palace. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. The siege is over. I want you to assure yourself that the siege over my home, the siege over my life, the siege over my family, the siege over the land, the siege over the nations of the world, it is over. It is over. It is over in the name of Jesus. And when the siege is over, the first thing that will happen is that there will be joy and rejoicing. Amen. There will be what? Joy and rejoicing. There's something about God that each and every one of us need to understand. When God speaks, his word will accomplish that which he has sent it to go and fulfill. And no one can prophesy in the name of the Lord when the Lord has not spoken. But once God releases his word, that word will go and fulfill and accomplish that which God has said. And so this morning, church, I am here to assure someone that your season of joy, gladness, and rejoicing has started yeah. because the siege is over. When the siege is over, there will be what? There will be joy. There will be gladness. There will be rejoicing. If you go down to verse 15 of that book of Esther, chapter 8, go down to verse 15, all the way to 15, all the way to 17. When God visited the children of Israel, I don't want to go into the story, but there was a man that raised up his head and said, I'm going to destroy this particular race. I'm going to destroy them. He set up a gallow, and the same gallow that he set up was the same one that he was hung on. Amen. But not only that, but because there was a war that has already gone forth from the king, and the king's war cannot be reversed. And so even though this man was hanged, the word that has gone forth from the king, in order for that word not to be fulfilled, the king had to issue another decree to counteract that. And that decree, when that decree went forth, the Bible says Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel, blue and white, with a great crown of gold. The Lord is going to honor someone Amen. in the presence of your enemy. With garment of linen and purple, the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The whole city that was preparing for mourning, that was preparing for slaughter, because of the king's decree that had earlier gone forth in order to destroy them. Another decree went forth from the king of king and the lord of lord, through the same king that issued the first decree. And when that decree now went forth, it canceled the first one. I decree for someone again that every siege that has been destroyed over your life, they will not arise again. Amen. Because the king of kings has already released a new decree. There was rejoicing in the city of Shushan. Verse 16. Amen. The whole city, the Jews, the Bible said they had lights. What does that mean? That means they were already in fear. They were already in bondage. They were already in darkness. They don't know what is going to happen to them next. But when the siege is over, there will be light. Amen. There will be gladness. Amen. There will be joy. Amen. There will be honor. Amen. Look at verse 17. God wants you to rejoice. And the Bible says in every province, in every city, wheresoever the king's commandment and his decree came, what happened? The Jews had joy and gladness and a feast and a good day. And because of what God will do for you, he said many people in the land will come to know your God. Many people of the land became Jew for the fear of the Jews came upon them. When the siege is over, there will be joy. There will be gladness. There will be rejoicing. There will be light. That shall be your portion from this day in the name of Jesus. When the siege is over. Number two, what will happen? There will be rest. True rest. Divine rest round about us. 
when a man have rest in life, there will be no more struggle. There will be no more futile efforts. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, from verse 1. 2 Samuel, chapter 7. The Bible talks about a man called David. Amen. 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verse 1. The second king of Israel. God had blessed this man. God gave him rest. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house. And the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemy. The Lord is giving you rest. Amen. I said, the Lord is giving you rest. Amen. True rest can only come from the Lord when the siege is over. Hallelujah. We all know the life of this man. He was a man of war. He fought so many battles all the days of his life. But he got to a point that the Lord said, enough, I'm going to give you rest. And the Lord gave him rest. I pray for someone again, you will receive rest. Amen. Rest from every hostility, from every war, in the name of Jesus. And this man also gave back to a child called Solomon, that I will always refer to as a minister of enjoyment. Praise God. This is a child that God gave him rest around about. And in his days, in his days, he did not have to fight any battle like his father. I pray for someone that every of your efforts, every of your siege, every of your service, you will enjoy true rest. In the name of Jesus. The Bible also Talk about the children of Israel. We know how they sojourned in the land of Egypt for 430 years. That's a long time to be in captivity. They received the promise of deliverance from the hand of Pharaoh and divine settlement in the promised land. And we know that God indeed delivered them. But those generations, when they were delivered, they did not enter into that rest. Most of them, in fact, all of them perished in the wilderness, except two. And all their children that they were talking about, that these children will die, those are the ones that now enter into that rest. I pray for someone again. You will not labor in vain. Amen. You will not toil in vain. Amen. Your labor of your, over your children, you will enjoy it. Amen. You will live to enjoy the fruit of your labor. In the name of Jesus. In the book of Joshua, chapter 21, from verse 43. Joshua, chapter 21, from verse 23. The Bible talks about the children of Israel. When God had visited them, delivered them, and took them to the promised land. Joshua 21, from verse 43. 43. God gave them rest. Praise God. The Bible says, and the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give unto their fathers, and they possess it, and dwell there. Verse 44, every promises of God for you will come to pass. Amen. I said it will come to pass. Amen. And the Lord gave them rest round about. The Lord will give you rest. Amen. According to all that he swore unto their father, there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. Look at verse 45. The Lord is going to give you rest. Amen. There fail not out of any of the good things which the Lord has spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. What has the Lord said unto you this year? Which word are you holding on to? That's the word of the Lord. All of them will come to pass. Because it is the word of the Lord. True rest, divine rest. You see, when the siege is over, it will look as if you are the only one that knows how to walk. Because God will give you rest. I decree true rest into your life, into your home, for someone, into your marriage, in the name of Jesus. When the siege is over, what will happen? Number one, I said there will be what? There will be joy. There will be rejoicing. 
there will be gladness. There will be light. There will be honor. Number two, I also said there will be what? There will be divine rest. There remain, therefore, a rest. Not for everyone, but for the people of God when the siege is over. Number three, what will happen when the siege is over? There will be divine abundance. Amen. I said there will be what? Divine abundance. In 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 16. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 16. When the siege over the city of Samaria was lifted, something happened. There was so much abundance. Amen. That at the same gate where women were ready to kill their children to eat them. At the same gate, a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. According to whose word? According to the word of the Lord unto you. The Lord is saying the siege over your life is over. And so you are entering into a season of abundance. I said you are entering into a season of abundance. Job 36, 11. If you will obey and serve me, you will spend your days in prosperity. Your years in what? In pleasure. I speak to someone. You see, it's one thing for the siege to be over, but it's another thing for a man to have good health to be able to enjoy that abundance. And so I speak into someone's life. That with long life, the Lord will satisfy you. Amen. I said, with long life, the Lord will satisfy you. Amen. Psalm 91 from verse 15. With long life, the Lord will satisfy you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I also speak to someone, divine health, to enjoy the abundance that is coming your way. Amen. Receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 14. Let's read from verse 31. Numbers chapter 14 from 31. Abundance is coming the way of someone. Amen. He said, but your little ones, which you said should be a prey, then will I bring it in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. 32. But as for you, the Lord was telling those doubters, your carcass shall fall in the wilderness. Now look at 33. And your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your order until your carcass be wasted in the wilderness. I pray for someone. You see, when God, these same people received the promise of deliverance. They were delivered from the bondage of Pharaoh. But there is still the spirit of Pharaoh that did not want them to enter into the abundance, into the rest that God has for them. And so they began to murmur and to complain. The siege over your life is over. Amen. And so I don't want you to now continue to realize it again. We are very good as Christians to continue to remind God of what he has already done. And say, but you know, in fact, I believe the word of God, but... I don't want you to be like the children of Israel. They received the promise, but there was still the spirit of Pharaoh that did not want them to enter into that true rest. And so they began to murmur and to complain, and they never made it to the promised land. The siege is over. It is settled. God has already prepared a place for you. And it's a large place. I said it's a large place. It's a place of true and divine rest. And so believe the word of God. Believe his prophet. He says, so you will do what? You will prosper. The siege is over. Tell your neighbor again, the siege over your life. It is over in the name of Jesus. Number four, what will happen when the siege is over? There is, there is what I will call divine instruction. For the next level. Divine instruction. For the next level. Isaiah chapter 30. Verse 21. Isaiah 
chapter 30, verse 21. When the siege is over, God will give you words of wisdom, words of counsel, words of guidance. And your ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. When you turn to the right, God will give you instruction. When you turn to the left, God will give you direction when the siege is over. But when a man is still under bondage, when the heaven is closed, you will not be able to hear what God is saying. I want someone to know that you are going into a new year and God wants to open your ears. He wants to open your ears to the voice of direction for the next level. To the voice of direction for the next level. In the book of Judges, chapter 6, let's start from verse 11. Judges, chapter 6, from verse 11. There is a man called Gideon. There was a siege over the land of Israel. And God gave them victory. And you know the children of Israel, typical of them. They rebelled against the Lord again. And there was another siege. And the scripture says that siege was so intense that they had to go and build themselves houses in caves and dens to live in. They were so oppressed and Israel was impoverished because of that siege. But there was a word from the Lord. God opened the ears of Gideon. And there came an angel and sat under the oak, which was in opera, that pertains unto Joash the Abiezerite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress. To do what? To hide it from the Midianites. Verse 12. Why would you have to hide? Because there was a siege. But the Lord has already said that siege is over. But at that time, Joshua and Gideon could not see. He was still walking by sight. And the angel appeared and said to him, the Lord is with you. I said, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. You may not see yourself like that now, but I'm here to decree that the Lord is with you. Amen. You mighty man of valor, in the name of Jesus. Verse 13, that angel told him, the Lord is with you. And of course, Gideon contested, well, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has all this befallen us? Why has God not showed up? Why is the enemy having a few day? But when the siege is over, look at verse 14. God will give you instruction. The Bible said the Lord looked on him. The angel didn't even address all his complaint. So please tell your neighbor, stop complaining. Because the siege is over. The Lord told him, go in this thy might, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? Has the Lord not spoken? Yes, the Lord has spoken. And that word to someone is that the siege is over. And so go in this thy might and begin to live a victorious life. When the siege is over, you will hear the voice of direction. You will hear the voice of instruction. If you go down to verse 22, God will speak to you. God will minister to you. He will teach you in the things that you need to do that will lift you up above your peers. He will give you insight and direction on what to do that will cause you to be the envy in the land because the siege is over. Praise the Lord. And when Gideon Finally, now realize, oh, this is an angel. He said, because I've seen the face of an angel. Verse 23. I don't want you to discount any instruction that is coming from the Lord. Because the Lord is saying, just like that angel told Gideon, peace be unto you. Don't be afraid. It does not matter what you see. Now, at that time, Gideon was still seeing oppression in the land. He was still seeing captivity. But because in the spiritual realm, the seed has been lifted. All they need to do is just to go out and what? And 
enter into the victory that heaven has given unto them. In fact, when Gideon led the children of Israel, before they went into the battle, he went into the camp of the enemy with few of his, you know, uh, people, and they can hear what the enemy was saying. Someone had a dream, and they saw a stone, you know, just rolling over everyone. They say, ah, it is the sword of the Lord, that man Gideon. And this was the same man that was looking at himself and complaining that we are not able. I'm here to let you know, when the siege over your life is over, stop seeing yourself as grasshoppers. That was why those children of Israel in the wilderness were not able to get to the promised land. They saw themselves as grasshoppers against the Amalekites. But God is saying, I am seeing a champion. I am seeing an astronaut. I am seeing an engineer. I am seeing a business owner. Why are you complaining? Why are you complaining? Why are you looking at yourself from the lens of what you can see? Praise the Lord. Let me round up and give us one, one more, and then we're going to go into our Thanksgiving. When the siege is over, there will be what I call divine restoration. Of all the blessings and the glory that has been lost. Amen. Everything that you have lost will come back to you. I said they will come back to you. In the name of Jesus. In Joel chapter 2 verse 25. Joel 2 25. The Lord said for I will restore unto you the years. Not just year. All the years that you have lost, that the locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar are stolen. I will restore. When the siege is over, there will be divine restoration of every of your lost glory, of every of your lost blessing, of every of your lost favor. When the siege is over. Praise the Lord. In the book of Genesis, chapter 8. Verse 22. We're going to go into our Thanksgiving now. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. While the earth remain, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Look at verse 21. 22. Let's start from 20. Amen. Let's start from 20. Noah built an ark. I'm sure we remember the story of Noah. He was in an ark. God preserved his household. And so when the siege of the flood was over, he took off the clean beasts of the fowl and offered a burnt offering. He want to offer thanksgiving. Amen. On the altar. In verse 21, Noah offered of every clean beast on the altar. And the Bible said the law smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I am not going to allow any form of siege to come over you again. I'm not sure someone got that. I said the Lord is going to smell your sacrifice this morning. He is going to smell your offering this morning. And he will not allow. He said, I will not cost the ground anymore for your sake. Please rise up on your feet. In the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 1. Exodus chapter 15 verse 1. The children of Israel, after passing through the Red Sea, they lifted up their voice. I will sing unto the Lord. For he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and the riders had been thrown into the sea. If you go down to verse 11. You see, the enemy that is already coming after you, when they saw their body on the sea, they know that there is no way they can come after them again forever. And so they lifted up their voice and they began to sing, Who is like unto thee, O Lord. Who is like unto thee? Oh, Lord, I'm the God who is like. 
to take a word of prayer before we begin to dance and rejoice unto the Lord. The word of the Lord is forever settled in heaven. And that word is that the seed over your career, over your health, over your finances, over the life of your children, over your home, over your marriage, over your health, is over. It's over. It's over. And so I want you to talk to the Lord. When the siege is over, what will follow? You are going to enter into a season of joy and rejoicing. What are those things that you want to begin to see? Because the siege is over. I enter into my season of joy and rejoicing. Oh, I enter into my season of divine rest. Rest round about me. Rest from every hostility, from every war. I will no longer be oppressed. I will no longer be afflicted. I enter into my season of divine abundance. The word of the Lord has assured you and I, you are going to live in houses you did not build. You are going to eat of the vineyard that you did not plant. God is going to give you divine instruction for the next level. You will hear the voice of direction. You will hear the voice of guidance. God will restore all the years, the things that you have lost, all the years that the locust, the canker worm, the palm worm, the caterpillar has eaten. Receive it now in the name of Jesus because the siege is over. The siege is over. The siege is over. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Father, we give you praise and glory. Oh, we appreciate you for a wonderful time in your presence in this last one week. Thank you because the siege over our land is over. The siege over the nation of the world is over. The siege over every home is over. Every womb is over. The siege over your career, the siege over your health, it is over. And when the siege is over, you said we will enter into a season of joy and rejoicing. I decree and I prophesy for every of my hearer gathered here today and watching us all over the world. Enter now into that season of joy and rejoicing. Shame and sorrow has come to an end in your life. Has come to an end in your home. In the name of Jesus, receive true rest, divine rest, total rest from every hostility, from every war. In the name of Jesus, I decree divine abundance. Oh, all around you, in the name of Jesus, every season of scarcity, of struggle, of hustling, it is over. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I prophesy for someone. Oh, yes, you will receive divine instruction divine direction for the next level. All the years that the locust, the canker worm and power mom are stolen in your life. Every of your lost goodness, of your lost glory, of your lost blessing, because the siege is over. Receive them now in multiple fold in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we are praying. And amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope your Bethel experience was blessed. Join us next time here in the sanctuary. You can drive in, carpool, or reach out to our transportation team for assistance. Our services hold every Sunday at 10 a.m. Stay connected via our social media platforms and visit our website at www.rccgbethelassembly.org. See you next time.